Welcome to Jack and the Bookstack. Today, I'm taking this edition of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo that I got from the thrift store, and I am going to turn this paperback into a beautiful custom hardcover book. This is not a tutorial. This is my first time trying a new bookish hobby, and I'm warning you now, I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. All the steps and every technique that I'm trying here, I learned from tutorials online. I will link some videos down below for you of the YouTube tutorials that I found really useful. I'm starting off by heating up the glue that holds the paperback cover to the text block so I can rip the cover off. This is the part I was so nervous about because once you start this, there is no going back. I was really scared I would destroy it and it just seems blasphemous to destroy a book like this but I know it is all for the greater good. It did not come off as cleanly as I would have liked, but I attribute that to my nerves and not really committing to ripping it off. I guess I could have scraped off some of the scraps a little bit better, but it was good enough for my first round. I also decided to take off this end page. I hate advertisements and books. That's one reason I'm really looking forward to making my own custom books. I mean, seriously, never once has what the New York Times said about a book influenced me to pick it up. I am testing out this cardstock scrapbook paper in a really pretty gold glitter. I think this will look great on the end pages, although I'm really curious how it will hold up over time being open and closed so much. I am folding it with the grain and sizing it according to the text block so that later I can secure it to the pages. This pH neutral PVA glue that I ordered from Amazon is what all the book binding videos recommend using. So I am gluing my first piece, which has me very nervous because again, it's a feeling of not being able to go back and just the very edge, I'm stenciling in a thin layer of glue so that I can secure the crease of the end pages to the actual text block. Again, I should probably remind you this is not a tutorial because this is one of the areas I messed up on. More on that later. At this point, I think I'm following my instructions pretty well. I did the end pages for the front cover and now I am doing the back cover the same way. I measured these end pages according to the text block and again, just a little thin line of glue to secure them. Now for one of the steps I am most excited about. I get to use my new book press for the first time. This is very sentimental because my boyfriend made one for me and my cousin as we entered into our new hobby. I am going to set this in the press for one hour. The most time consuming piece of this whole process was coming up with a cover design. I had to watch a lot of tutorials on how to use Cricut Design Space which was not as intuitive as I was hoping. I also used Etsy to download different images like the film strip and the art deco accents. So there is a lot for me to learn in this area, but hopefully I will only get faster. I am also testing out the different fonts. I do think the font on this title might be a little bit too delicate, but I want to give it a try and see what the boundaries are for the Cricut machine. I cannot tell you how excited I am to finally use my Cricut machine for its intended purpose of cutting vinyl for book rebinding. I got this machine on a Black Friday sale at the end of November and it's January and I finally get to use it. I have been so patient. I am using Sizer heat transfer vinyl in this metal metallic kind of finish. I am really curious how this will turn out there are a lot of tutorials out there and everybody seems to have a different preference of vinyl, but Sizer seems to be a popular one amongst some of the other bookbinders out there. It was so satisfying to peel the mat away from the vinyl. I love seeing the design come to life and seeing how well the Cricut executed on the design. Cutting the chipboard for the hardcovers was not as easy as I thought it would be. I used an X-Acto knife. 
So next time I might try and use the Cricut to cut it instead because it's not very clean edges. I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not. And this is what I use. This is 100 point chipboard that is 2.54 millimeters thick. This is the book binding cloth that I'm going to use to reinforce the spine. Using my handy dandy book press to hold the text block in place, I am going to glue on my ribbon bookmark. I opted to skip a step right here to add headbands to the text block just because I want to see what the impact is of skipping it because it's a material that's kind of expensive and hard to get. So if you're familiar with bookbinding, I intentionally skipped that. For now, I'm reinforcing the spine by gluing on this book cloth, and then I finish it off by measuring out the length of the ribbon and cutting it. Next, I need to secure the edges of the book cloth to the front and back covers of the text block. Next up, I am using some spacers that I ordered from Etsy. I got these in a bunch of different sizes, so I am using them to ensure consistent spacing between the spine and the front and back covers. Temporarily, I am adding masking tape to hold the pieces together while I continue working on assembling the book. This step was actually a lifesaver because I was jostling it around quite a bit. One of the many decisions I had to make around book rebinding was what materials to use for the cover. This has really paralyzed me from actually starting this hobby because there are so many options. I decided to start with this emerald green book cloth that I got from Amazon to see what I think of it for future binds. I like this option because I can get it in so many different colors. It's cheaper and it's a little bit more ethical in my opinion than messing around with real animal leather when I have no idea what I'm doing. It also really appeals to me that this material is sold specifically for bookbinding, so I would not be battling the wrong material, only my own lack of experience. Gluing the cloth to the chipboard is another area where I'm going to need some practice. It seems really simple, but spoiler alert, this is one step that comes back to bite me later. In the moment though, this was very, very satisfying. I feel like this is the part where the shape comes together in the form of a book rather than scraps of material all over the place. I assembled this and put the text block back in the cover so I could smooth out the cloth, being sure that it dried evenly. I loved scraping out the air bubbles and making sure all the wrinkles were smoothed out and everything was laying flat. I flipped it over to do the other side as well and I'm feeling pretty good about myself at this point. It's starting to look like a book and I feel like I'm doing a pretty decent job. I popped in two sheets of baking paper in between the chipboard and the text block in the front and back covers. I did this just in case some of the glue seeped out. I wanted to be sure the pages were protected and didn't get damaged at all. Then I popped it back into my book press and I left it with pressure on it overnight to be sure that it dried securely. Once that was done, again, I used my spacers from Etsy to ensure there was a little bit of a gap from the edge of the corner. And then I cut the book cloth at a 45 degree angle. This is to ensure clean folds as I continue securing the cloth to the chipboard. Again with my glue, I swear I'm going to use this whole bottle for one book. I need a bigger size bottle. I glued all the edges and then folded them over. Again, anytime I can smooth the fabric over the chipboard, this is so satisfying. This was another one of my favorite steps. Once I folded all the edges over, I bet you can't guess what I am going to do next. Put it back in the book press. Of course, I have to be sure that it dries completely. I'm sure you're wondering how the vinyl cuts turned out, so let's get back to that. This was incredibly painstaking because I have to scratch out all the little squares of the film reel, all the little holes in the letters. It was incredibly tedious, and I think all my years playing Operation as a kid really prepared me for this. 
Now, I was peeling the title and I did confirm I was right. It was too delicate of a font and it did not turn out. I'm gonna need to reprint that. I told you one of the steps would come back to bite me. Look at that pattern of the glue. This is the back cover and you can see where I squeezed out the glue in that squiggly pattern, even though I brushed it on afterwards. The front cover doesn't look too much better either. I had no idea that you'd be able to see it that clearly. So I either need a different material or I need to change my technique, keeping this in mind. I watched a tutorial about heat transfer vinyl on a t-shirt. I tested it out, it worked, so I decided to start with the same techniques here, and I learned it is not the same. Oh my gosh, this is horrible. I was so not happy with this. I tried a lot of different ways to get this one to work, but it kept turning out like that where half of it was applied and half of it was black. Unsure if I was using too much heat or not enough heat, I was trying different techniques on the corners on the front covers, but still the same thing was happening. And I did not get any closer to figuring out what's going on. And I promise you, I tried doing some sample test strips with the vinyl and pieces of the cloth before I even tried doing it on the cover. I was super frustrated. So I took the time to redesign my cover and reprint it with a different font for the title. I brought in some expert help and I also reached out to some bookbinders on Instagram. Huge shout out to the binary bookbinder who talked with me, looked at pictures and helped me figure out what I was doing wrong. Okay, so before giving up on the back cover, I am testing this method, which is the lowest heat and 13 seconds uh, without baking paper with baking paper. I tried it on this, so let's see how this went. The big secret to this was letting it cool. Oh, that looks much better. Still far from perfect, but I think that's as good as I'm going to be able to get it. And at least we know the secret is you have to let it completely cool before you take this off. Now I'm feeling much more confident in the settings, so I risked realigning the vinyl for the corners on the front cover and reapplying. I am so happy with how this corner in particular turned out. It is very clean. Full steam ahead, I am applying the title and the author to the spine of the book using the lowest setting on my handheld heat press for about 13 seconds, letting it cool, applying heat for another five seconds, and then letting it pool, cool for maybe 15 minutes before I remove. You better believe I was holding my breath to ensure it would look okay when I pull the transfer tape off and look how good it is. I am so happy. After nailing the vinyl on the spine, it was time to do the cover with the title in the new font. This was a great decision. This font is a lot better for my skill level right now. I glued the glitter end pages to the chipboard and it went back in the book press one last time overnight. And don't worry, no cover is going to waste. I am using this sliver from the paperback as a future bookmark. But for this edition with a ribbon bookmark, I am securing a charm at the end. I really love this finishing touch and I think it adds a layer of class to this Evelyn Hugo rebind. Presenting to you for the very first time, my first bookbind of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I am so happy with how this turned out. Obviously, there's some areas that we know I have a learning curve, and particularly when it comes to the end pages, I realize that I did not measure it too well. That's definitely a learning experience. I measured it against the text block and then cut it, but I probably should have cut it after. So I learned that. It's the same on this too. It goes too far to the end. And also, I wanted there to be a little bit of overhang of the hardcover, but it's lining up like kind of perfectly with the text block, if you can see that. Um, but you know, all for the next one, this was just supposed to be a practice run. And I'm happy that this turned out a lot better 
after learning that I need to let the vinyl cool completely. But I kind of like that it's flawed because it's January. This is my very first book bind. I cannot wait to see how much progress I make by the end of the year. I am super pleased with this. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I stumbled my way through this. And hopefully I'll do many more of these videos. Thank you.